Treaty 7 was signed on September 22 of 1877, which today is located in southern Alberta. The signing took place at Blackfoot Crossing, now located in the heart of the Siksika or Blackfoot Nation, about 100 kilometers east of Calgary. This location was selected due to convenience. Originally, the signing was to be held at Hand Hills, a few hundred miles from Blackfoot Crossing. This location was requested by the First Nations in 1875. However, the British wanted to meet in Fort McLeod so that it would be more convenient for both the officials and the police. When Chief Crowfoot, one of the two leading chiefs of the Blackfoot tribe, found out about the signing being in Fort McLeod, he objected to meeting on the white man's fort and requested that the site be changed to Blackfoot Crossing. Reluctantly, the commissioners agreed. The treaty was signed between the First Nations people and the British. The nations involved in the signing were the Siksika, Kenai, Pikani, Sutina, and Stony Nations. The treaty was first proposed on January 1877, about eight months prior to the actual signing. The Honorable David Mills had stated a treaty needed to be put into place, and so he sent out two commissioners. The government needed Treaty 7 land in order to extend the Transcontinental Railway. In order to gain access to the land, the treaty was used to negotiate. The Canadian government promised one square mile for each Aboriginal family, a limited supply of cattle, farm equipment, a small amount of ammunition money, education, and certain medical services. Terms of the treaty included annual payments, reserves, suits of clothing for the chief and councillor, and a few animals and crops for their families. Families who chose to farm more than what they were given were reduced the number of cattle given, but also gained farming tools and a certain amount of barley, oats, and wheats. The true spirit and intent of Treaty 7 was to create peace and to share the land, but due to difference in language there were many misinterpretations, which misled their understanding of the treaty. They did not know it meant that they had to surrender their land and resources. Many promises were left unfulfilled, such as land that was promised for hunting was decreased for the development of the railway. First Nations were displaced, designated, and restricted to reserves on land that was poor for agriculture. Treaties today have a great impact on First Nations. The significance of the fact is that the misinterpretations have deprived many First Nations. Today, they stand up for their rights and fight for their freedom. An ongoing movement, Idle No More, was started to raise awareness towards the First Nations community as they wished to see a brighter future for their children. Protests against the dehumanizations of First Nations people have also been held. As people, they have been marginalized and overgeneralized through stereotypes. And now they stand up for not only themselves, but their families, culture, and future. The 11 treaties were agreements between the First Nations and the British. The British pursued industrialization, development, settlement, and for the most part, treaties were made to gain access to land and resources. The signing of the treaties changed Canada and formed it to be the way it is today.